today we're going to talk about trigonometric ratios. Trigonometric ratios are just a ratio of the lengths of two sides and a right triangle. Remember, this whole unit is about the right triangle and the different properties that come with right triangles. With the trigonometric ratio, you're not going to be given two sides of the triangle, so you can't use Pythagorean theorem. So when you can't use Pythagorean theorem, what are you going to do to solve your right triangle? With that, we use what we call the tangent, sine, and cosine ratios. The tangent ratio is the ratio of the lengths of the legs in a right triangle. So as you recall, when you have your right triangle, this is a leg, this is a leg, and this is our hypotenuse. And the tangent is going to be a ratio of the leg to the leg. Well, which one? That's a good question. The tangent ratio comes from the two acute angles in the triangle. It can never ever be used with the right triangle. You'll never use the middle right triangle at all. So the angle's out. You're always going to use either acute angle. It can be angle A or angle C. With that, when you're looking at angle A, the tangent is derived from the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. It makes the ratio. Again, you could have the tangent of C would be the opposite leg of angle C over the adjacent leg of angle C. So you can use either acute angle when you're trying to find it. With that, it forms a, a ratio, which is a fraction, that we can then make a decimal from. These answers will be decimal answers. Tangent here, A is just the degree of the angle. And we'll show that when we set it up in our examples in a second. The other two the other two ratios we have are the sine and the cosine ratio. Sine and cosine are set up to use a leg. It's up for the acute triangle. I guess the acute angle, sorry. Not the acute triangle. The acute angle that involves the lengths of the legs and the hypotenuse. So with that, a tangent involves both legs sine and cosine involve a leg and a hypotenuse. Which leg and which hypotenuse? That's going to determine which angle you're looking for or which side you're going to use. With this here, again, you're never going to use the right angle. It's always going to be the acute angles. So jumping down here, which is the actual application, it says the ratio consists of, so if I'm looking at angle A, whatever the degree of angle A is, it's the length of the opposite over my hypotenuse for my sine. With my cosine of angle A, it's my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So it depends which leg you're given for which leg you're, which, um, which ratio you're going to use. Now with that, there's a way that we can memorize who to use what. It's first of all, it's called Sokotoa. So, ka, toa. That means um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you can remember the, 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 the mnemonic Sokotoa or I remember some old horse came a-hoppin' through our alley, because I can never get the A's and the O's straight. So I remember some old horse came a-hoppin' through our alley, just the way I memorized it, or so ka toa either way. And this will help you set up the ratio so that you can solve the problem. Now, a big, big, big star. Before we can solve these problems, which we're going to do, we're going to come back to the angle of elevation and depression in a second. Before we can solve these problems, there is a little glitch in your calculator. If you're using a standard regular scientific calculator, it's already set in degrees. Our big fancy calculator is not. So with our big fancy calculator, we have to do a little conversion. We have to take our calculator we have to come into here, second mode, or sorry, just mode, not second mode, just mode, and we need to change it to degrees. 
it is automatically set into radians. That means when you take the SOL test, it's going to be in radians. When you take a quiz, it's going to be in radians. When you take a test, it's going to be in radians. It'll be in radians. So we have to switch it. So we just scroll on down to where it says radian. We switch over to degrees and we hit enter. Now degrees is highlighted, so therefore we know we're ready to go. Again, if you're using a standard calculator at home, you do not have to do this step. The graphing calculator, you're always, always going to have to change. And I'm not going to remind you you're going to have to change it. Okay? I'm not going to remind you you're going to have to change it. You're going to have to change it. Okay? So, change calculator to degrees. And it's the mode button. Now, with that, with that, um, everything we're doing is degrees. Later in Algebra 2 Trig, in the Trig portion, you learn radians. Okay, we are not doing radians. Everything we're doing is degrees, because you'll have a degree of the angle of the triangle. Okay? So let's come back to angle of elevation and depression. Let's go ahead and move forward to our examples to see what Miss Singletary is talking about. Okay? Now, typically, if you're given a triangle like this, typically you wouldn't have all three sides. Okay, what you're trying to do is you're trying to write the fraction that the, or the trig ratio. That's what you're trying to find. The fraction is your trig ratio. It is the same thing. Typically, your problems will look like this, and you'll be missing a side to actually apply the trig ratio. Okay? So, let's just talk about what the ratios look like. First of all, it says to find the tangent of angle S. We don't know what angle S is. It just wants the trig ratio for angle S. That's what it wants, the ratio. All right, so we know that Sokotola tells us that the tangent of S was through, was the TOA, so T, O, and A. That means the opposite over the adjacent, or through our alley, however you want to think about that. That's what we're looking for. So the tangent of S, we're going to look at angle, uh, angle S right here. We want the opposite, which is 60, over the adjacent to the angle, which is 25. That is the fraction or the ratio that's created by this trigonometric ratio. With that, of course, we're really good math students, so we're going to go ahead and reduce our fraction. So it asks us for a fraction, and it asks us for the decimal. All I need to do is to divide 12 by 5, and I will get a decimal. Usually they don't come out to nice pretty numbers. That's why it says round to four places if necessary, because usually you're going to have a hot mess. All right, so now let's look at the tangent of R. We know that. Looking now at this angle over here, we know that still the, ta the tangent of R is going to be opposite over adjacent. So the opposite, though, from R is 25, and the adjacent is 60. So here, when I go to solve this, I end up having 5 over 12, which then I'm going to have to round it when I do the math on my calculator. thousands places. Depending on which angle you're looking at is going to depend on how the ratio sets up. I know that sounds a little confusing. So let's look at number two. We can actually see an application of it. We're looking here at this triangle here. We want to find x. We can't use Pythagorean theorem. I have one side of the triangle. So what am I going to do? Well first, I need to see what I'm given. In this place here, I'm given that the two legs. Whenever I'm given the legs, I'm going to use the tangent. So, so Katoa, or through our alley, however you think about it, however you think about setting up that tangent. So the tangent of my angle, well my angle here is 31 degrees. That's going to be my base angle. It's going to equal, well tangent equals the opposite side over my adjacent side. Now, 
it's all just done nicely math on the calculator. All this is done on the calculator. First, I can't keep x in a denominator, so I'm going to have to multiply both sides by x. So x times the tangent of 31, because that's 31 degrees, is going to equal 17. Again, we're solving an equation, so x has to be by itself. So I have to divide both sides by the tangent of 31. Now it's just calculator work. So I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator. I already made it go into degrees, so I'm okay, but I'm always going to check that. I just take my calculator and I say, okay. Try to see if you can see the whole calculator here. Okay. So I do 17 divided by. Now, this is where I have to use my calculator. I say these three little buttons here are the sine, cone, sine, and tangent buttons. So I hit tangent and it'll say tan. I'll say how many degrees do I want? I want 31 and I'm going to close my parenthesis. Then when I hit enter, I get a weird number. I'm always going to get an irrational number. Well, not always, but most of the time. And I'm always going to then round it. And as I told you before, we round hundreds makes it nicer. So the tangent of 31 degrees, so x, sorry, x, the length of x is 28.29. Now at this point, if I was to check it using Pythagorean theorem, well, I wouldn't know the other side. I'd say I want to find the other side. You have to realize this is an approximation, so it's going to be a little bit off. But now that I have this side, if I wanted to find this side, I could use Pythagorean theorem because now I have two sides. That's where you, it's the application component. I, I can't use Pythagorean theorem, so what else can I use? Okay, so let's look at number three. Okay, number three says, I want to find the height of the lighthouse. So the height of my lighthouse is right here. That's my height to the nearest foot. So I know I'm going to round to a whole number because that's what nearest foot is. I'm given this angle and I'm given this side. So let's think for a minute. When I'm given the two legs, is it going to be sine, cosine, or tangent? Correct. Tangent uses my two legs. So my tangent equals my opposite over my adjacent. So the tangent of 62 degrees, so I'm looking at this angle here with 62 degrees. So from here, the opposite is my height over 100. That's my equation to solve. So now with my equation to solve, I'm going to multiply both sides by 100 to get rid of that denominator. So my height just equals 100 times tangent of 62 degrees. So again, coming into my calculator, I know I'm already in degrees because once I change it, it's locked that way forever until I reset it. So 100 times tangent 62, end of parenthesis, equals 188.07. Now, technically, because we are a word problem, we should put feet. Always label our answers when we have a word problem. And it says here that it's feet, and it wants to know a height. Height is feet. That's it. And it is an approximate for all of you who like to put little squigglies. Number four we're not going to do. Number four is just saying if we used our special triangles, you could use this as well on the special triangle unit we just did. Um, but usually when you have your special triangles, you're looking for your answer in radical form. You can never go back to your answer in radical form So from the calculator. So I'm not going to worry about this because it's not going to make us or break us. So we're not going to worry about that problem right there. We're more worried about the setting up of the trig ratio. All right, so on number five, it just wants to know find sine of u and sine of w. So it wants the fraction. So it just wants the trig ratio. It doesn't want anything else. It just wants my ratio. So we know that sine is some old horse or soa. So from angle u, so the sine of angle u means from here, it's going to be my opposite of it over my hypotenuse. So it's 16 over 34. And again, 
We are good math students, so we're going to reduce our fraction. And it wants the fraction and it wants the decimal. So the decimal is about that. Now it says, let's look at the other angle and see what's going on. So now I want the sine of W. The only thing that changes is now who is my opposite and who is my, hypo my hypotenuse isn't going to change, but who's my opposite side. So here, my opposite side over my hypotenuse. Again, I'm going to reduce. And then again, I'm going to have to round. All of these are going to come out to irrational numbers except for a very tiny, tiny bit. So you're always going to have to round. Before we do application, number six is just asking the same thing. Can you set up those trig ratios? What are they? Well, coming back to the beginning here, we're looking for cosine. Okay, that's so ka toa, so it's the ka, or kama hopping, if you think about the horse analogy I made. So that means that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of angle S, we're going to look at angle S, is going to be the adjacent angle, or the adjacent side, excuse me, to S over my hypotenuse. And this one does not reduce. How do I know it doesn't reduce? Because 53 is a weird number. But remember, we can always come to our calculator and say 50, uh, 45 divided by 53, math, enter, enter, get the same thing, it doesn't reduce. Just as a sidebar. When I divide and round. Now, looking at the cosine of R. So now from the different side, different angle. So from this angle, I'm looking at my adjacent over my hypotenuse, which it doesn't, doesn't uh, reduce either. And when I divide it on my calculator and round, I get this. Very rarely, we're going to do 5 and 6. Mostly, we're going to do ones that are applications. We're going to move into application right now. <coughs> All right, so I'm walking from one corner of my basketball court to the opposite corner. I want to write and solve a proportion using my trigonometric ratio to find the distance of my walk. Mm -hmm. Again, there's no other way I could find the distance of my walk because I'm only given one side. I cannot use Pythagorean theorem. So therefore, I have to go ahead then and use the trigonometric ratio. So which one? All right. Um, some old horse or so, ka toa. So which one am I going to use? What am I given? So from angle 62, I'm given the opposite and I'm given the hypotenuse. So because I'm given an opposite and hypotenuse from the angle, I'm going to have to use the sign. That's how you figure out which one you're going to use. From that angle, what do I have going on? So ka toa, I write it at the top of my paper every time and fill in my blanks to where they fall. So the sine of 62 is going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse. And here again, my x is in the denominator, so I need to get it out of my denominator. So with that, that's going to go away. So x sine of 62 equals 94. I'm going to have to divide by sine of 62. Again, just like anything else, it's just a piece. It's a term together. That's it. So I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator because there's no way to do it without one. 94 divided by, I hit my sign button, end of parenthesis. I get 106.46 when I round it. It's going to be feet. And voila, I am perfect. Okay, um, 8 and 9 have to do with the angle of depression and the angle of elevation. So let's jump the boat back a second and let's talk about them. Come back to the front. The angle of elevation is basically that I'm looking straight out from my eyesight. So here I am. Voila. 
I'm looking straight out and say, oh, I see a bird in the sky. What's that, little birdie? That's the angle of elevation. It's how much did my eyesight from regular view go up to an object. It elevated upwards to see the little pretty bird or plane in the sky. The angle of depression says, okay, that's a really, there you go. Again, I'm looking straight out and, ooh, I see a bug. I look down. So it's the angle that my eyes went from, again, looking straight out to looking at the bug on the ground or looking down at my bug. So elevation elevates up from my line of eyesight. Depression elevates down from, or goes down from my level of eyesight. So now let's go back over here to number eight. So on number eight, it says I'm at a roller coaster. I'm at the top of the roller coaster who's 100 feet above the ground. So I, I basically have gone uphill, 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 because here's my little roller coaster. I'm at the top. All right, so now it says the angle of depression is 44. How big is my hill? So looking straight out from the top of the hill, the angle of depression looks down to the ground. That's my angle of depression. Because again, it makes a right triangle. So there's my 44 degrees right there. With that, my angle of depression to find my diagonal, because I'm finding how far I'm looking down to, again, I'm gonna use Sokotoa. So again, some old horse came a hopping through our alley, or so ka toa, however you can remember that. So, what am I given here? I'm given a leg and I'm given a hypotenuse. So right away I know it can't be tangent. So now, am I given a leg that's opposite or next to it? Well, I'm given the one that's opposite. So opposite again is my sign. So the sign of that 44 degrees equals my opposite over my hypotenuse. So now, I just take it and I solve for x. So, multiply both sides by x. So x sine of 44 equals 100. Divide by the sine of 44. So x equals 100 divided by sine 44 gives me 143.955 or 96 and again we're talking feet. Shoop. There we go. All right. Last but not least, the uh, the, the railroad crossing arm that is 20 feet long, so he's 20 feet long as the crossing arm is stuck with an angle of elevation of 35 degrees. That means they looked out straight here, they elevated up here. So they're talking about this point here because it elevated up of 35 degrees. Find the length of X and Y. All right, so again, I'm given a side, I'm given an angle. Oop. So, ka toa. Notice I write it every problem so I can fill in my blanks. I know my reference point is this 35 degrees. I know I'm given a hypotenuse. So again, tangents out. So now, with that, this, I need to find x or y. Let's start with x. From 35, x is opposite, and then I have my hypotenuse. So it's going to be the sine of 35 equals x over my hypotenuse. Now I'm going to solve for x. So 20 sine 35 equals 11.47, again it's little feet, equals x. All right, so now I wanna go ahead and I wanna find y. So to find y, again, I'm gonna go back to my Sokotoa, but again, I'm given a hypotenuse. So now when I look at this 35, I'm given the adjacent over here. So when I'm given the adjacent, that's my cosine. So the cosine of 35 is my adjacent over my hypotenuse. So now I just solve again. So 
So I just do 20 cosine of 35 degrees, and that's going to give me 16.38 feet. And again, number 10 we're not going to do. So to kind of wrap up what we're doing here is that whenever we use our trig functions, or our trig ratios, we use them when we're given an angle and we're given a side and we're trying to find another side. We can't use the Pythagoras, they can't come to the party, so we need to figure out another way to solve our problem. The only other way to solve our problem is using SOHCAHTOA, which is our trig ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. It sets up a ratio that we're able to now go ahead and solve with an equation our problem. With that, 90% or 95% of our answers are going to be irrational and we're going to have to round them. Remember, SOHCAHTOA, it is the phrase that pays.